love your play. Always enjoy it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And I am the Reverend Allison Cornell. We're glad to have you with us this morning for our first Advent uh, Sunday worship. And uh, I suppose I should say a uh, Happy New Year. Last uh, Sunday, you remember, I kind of walked us through the cycle of the church year. And now we're at First Advent. It's the first uh, Sunday of the new church year. So a happy new church year to you. And as you can see, we've gotten things decorated for Advent. We're starting on Christmas. Christmas is a gradual affair in this church. Uh, you'll notice we've got the tree, but the tree is empty. As we go each week closer to Christmas, more things will appear on the, church, on the tree. The other thing you'll notice is we've got the space for the creche behind me, and uh, we will have our, uh, our Mary and Joseph making their way. They're currently in the back, and uh, next week they'll be a little bit closer, and then the week after a little bit closer, and by Christmas Eve, they will have arrived in Bethlehem, which is right behind me. So pay attention for that. Um, a, a few announcements before we do begin our worship, and that is that um, Mark, our, our beloved ed, parish administrator and tech uh, expert extraordinaire, is going to be having surgery on Tuesday on his ankle. So please keep Mark and the doctors and nurses that will be taking care of him in your prayers for him um, because uh, we, we want that to go successfully and that he has a smooth recovery. But it does mean that he'll be off of his feet, or at least off of one ankle, um, for a while, and we're just kind of waiting to see how it goes. Um, so um, do keep him in prayer. He'll be out of the office for a while. We don't know exactly how long yet. So if you are trying to reach us at the office during the week, please have some patience. It may take a bit before we get the word and get back to you. Um, if it's something urgent, please try and call me uh, directly if it's something that's of an emergent nature. Um, Anne has graciously agreed to be our treasurer for now, and we appreciate that. She's coming up to speed, and uh, we hope to have her fully into the role in the next uh, couple of months as she learns all the things that we have to do as uh, the treasurer for the church. Next Saturday um, at 9 o'clock here in the church, um, if you would like to be a reader of the lessons for our church, we're going to have a training session that starts at 9. Please come to that. We'll very quickly walk through uh, sort of the, the way I prefer things to be done as far as reading, uh, a little bit of a dramatic reading um, added, and we'll let you have a chance to practice. At 9.30, if you would like to be an altar server, if you would like to be a Eucharistic minister, we'll have training at 9.30. You can do both. You don't have to just pick one or the other if you're interested in both. But please come around 9 or 9.30 next Saturday here in the church, and we'll have that training. Um, stewardship campaign will go through the 30th. If you have not yet submitted your pledge card, we ask that you do so uh, this weekend or by Tuesday. You can do it online on our website as well. Um, let's see. Coats for kids will continue to the 15th of December. So if you have coats or jackets that you would like to donate, that will continue for the next couple of weeks. And uh, starting today after our worship service, we will have our adult forum using this booklet, Eyewitness. There are extras back on the table there if you haven't picked one up. And we're going to look at the, um, the lessons for today, First Advent, and there's a little reflection, and then we're going to talk about that and, uh, and see what kind of conversation that generates. And it's about um, asking for God for things and, and having to wait for those to happen. So join us after worship today um, for that. And uh, pick up a booklet to have with you for uh, the rest of Advent because it's a devotional. It has a daily reflection for every day during Advent right on through the Christmas season. Um, let's see. We do have a new sextant. She came on Friday to try out being the, the, the janitor of the church, the sextant, and she's agreed to take the position. So uh, her next time to be here, um, it'll be about every other week or so. So uh, we do have somebody, and I appreciate those that gave me names, and we've got somebody hired for that. Christmas Eve services here will be at 6 p.m., 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve. I will be up in Benson before that to take care of their church and their Christmas Eve. Then we'll do Christmas Eve here. 
The following day would be Christmas Day, and we're going to kind of move it off one day to Sunday. So Christmas Day will be celebrated on Sunday. There will not be a service here on Saturday the 25th. So just make sure you make a note of that in your, uh, in your calendars. Um, and then the last thing is that while Mark is out, we're going to have this um, bulletin will be the same one that we use each week. So when you're done today, leave this part behind and then the part that has the announcements and the readings you can take with you. This will be new each week. So we will recycle the Advent Bulletin with a new insert for the lessons and announcements each week. Um, I know we've got a couple of announcements over here. Doreen, you wanted to say something. Yes, this coming Saturday, December 4th, our girl will be at the Bisbee Book and Music right behind Bisbee Coffee Company, uh, signing the two of the books that I wrote. So um, come and see if, uh, and say hi and have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and tell us um, what those books are about. Uh, the first book is Skyland the Mars Colony. It's uh, science fiction, no vampires, and, and nothing, uh, no vapid details. It's rated PG. Uh, right, and then the second book is Mile Markers, a memoir, obviously a memoir, uh, why I went into the mental health field and how music was a help to me. And so I got a couple publishers for that, and I'm just going to be signing out in front of the Bisbee Book and Music store. All right. Drop by. And then, Pat, you have an event coming up this coming weekend. Yes, on Saturday, December 4th, um, a ceramic show I put together that's going to be at um, Inside Ruth Raymond, just on Fry Boulevard and about Fifth Avenue, 590. And the, uh, between 2 and 6 p.m. And the opening reception starts at 2, right? Yep. Okay, so if you're interested in seeing some of Pat's ceramics, go there on Saturday if you'd like to get a signed copy from the author book uh, from Doreen. Uh, that's over in Bisbee, and you can go and, and see it and, and take care of that. Are there other announcements this morning before we begin our worship? Yes, yes. Um, as Joe mentioned, Sack Memorial Service is going to be Friday the 3rd. At the Green Memorial uh, uh, Funeral mm -hmm. Parlor at uh, on Broadway in Peacock, and uh, it will also be online. And I will be forwarding mm -hmm. that to Rhett and Allison so it can be put in a newsletter. Okay, one of our online. former parishioners, Joe. How do you say his last name? Layton Sack. Layton Sack, who passed away. His memorial is on Friday, and apparently they'll have it online. And I will make sure that that link gets out for those of you who may remember Joe. Other announcements. All right then, our opening song this morning is in uh, the hymnal 1982, and it's number 67. Please stand as you are able and sing along with us. <clears throat> Thank you. 
the next part of our service is the lighting of the Advent wreath, and we've invited Chet and Diane to come forward. While they come and light the wreath, we will sing uh, verses 1 and 2 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <clears throat> Let us say the collect for today together. Almighty God, God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. The first letter, uh, first reading is uh, from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, 
and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in saying aloud uh, Psalm 25, found on the inside of your insert. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who heed his covenant and his testimonies. The second lesson this morning is from 1 Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see your face to face, see you face to face, and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and with the worries of this life, and that the day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. I mentioned that today is the first uh, Sunday in Advent, and I thought that it might be uh, good to pass on a few fun facts about Advent, some things that perhaps you may already know or may not know. Um, so as we know, Advent is a word uh, that derives from the Latin Adventus. Does anybody know what the word Advent means? Beginning? Beginning. 
heard over here somewhere. No? Coming or arrival. Beginning would be another way to put that. And it starts our, our season, our year, our church year, because we commemorate the uh, Old Testament prophecies that pointed to the Messiah and who the Messiah would be, the type of person that, that, that the Messiah would be. And we didn't get an exact date, but they basically said, here's all the things that, that would point to this person when they arrive as being the Messiah. And in Advent, we look at some of those prophecies, and we'll look at the one in Jeremiah in just a minute, and we look at um, what was told about who the Messiah would be, where he would come from, and so forth, and we see those things happening in the birth of Jesus the Christ, right? So we look, at, we look backwards at Jesus' first coming, when he already came and fulfilled those prophecies, and at the same time, we look at this time of the year for his next coming, the second coming of Jesus. And we have both of those that are encapsulated in this time of Advent. He came once, and that was anticipated and expected and waited for for many years. And now we are in the same place of waiting for his second coming. We're anticipating that next arrival. So the church has had this as a season of expectation and celebration and hope, and it's connected, as I said, to his first coming, his birth, and his second coming, which we don't know exactly when that will happen, but more on that later. Um, and the season was first begun to be um, observed or recognized about the fourth or fifth centuries after Jesus' uh, death and resurrection. And... Um, We've got the, the, the more modern practices that we use traced back to the Middle Ages and to about the 1800s. The first time that Advent, uh, an Advent calendar is mentioned was in, let me get the date here, 1851 in Elise Averdeek's picture book. I don't know who that was, but that was the first Advent calendar that showed up. And the first Advent wreath dates back to 1839. And the story about the Advent wreath goes something like this. There was a Lutheran minister in Germany who was working at a children's mission, and he created the first Advent wreath from a cartwheel, and around the edge of the cartwheel, he put 20 little red candles, and then at the center part where the axle would join, he put four white candles, and they would light each candle each day, you know, one for the first day, two for the second day, three for the third day, so forth. And on Sundays, they would light one of the white candles so that the children could count down the days until Christmas. And that's how we got the first Advent wreath. Now, after some time, it, it sort of morphed a little bit, got added to, and so sometimes you see greenery around it, evergreens, pine balls, holly, things like that around the wreath. And that evergreen, those things that, are, that stay green all year round are meant to, uh, to symbolize the everlasting life that Jesus promises us. So that is part of the symbolism of the wreath as well. The other piece that you might note, if you see holly used, uh, anybody that's familiar with holly, you know that the points of the leaves are prickly have like little thorns on them and those are supposed to represent the crown of thorns that Jesus was crowned with at his crucifixion and the little red berries represent his blood that was shed on that day of crucifixion so you have that greenery you've got the little pointy bits you've got some red in there you might also find pine cones or acorns or seeds things like that are part of the decoration that goes around the wreath and those represent the promise of new life. That when you plant a seed out of that, when it's watered and it's planted, you get new life, a new plant that comes up. The shape of the wreath being a circle is similar to a wedding band and the meaning that goes into the wedding band and that there is no end and no beginning. It's one continuous circle. It's an ongoing eternal circle. There's no place where it doesn't start or doesn't end. It's all one continuous cycle. And that is represented also 
by what we consider of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, that there is new life and there is eternal life. That when we become believers, we get a new life, and then, as we know, this life is not the end. That there's more life that we are transitioning to upon the death of our bodies. So all of those things are part of the wreath, and then there's the candles themselves. And the candles, as we heard, the first one, you know, they had 20 uh, little red ones and four white ones. Since then, we've kind of morphed it down into the four candles plus the white one, and we use those to mark each week as opposed to each day. So we will write, we'll, we have lit the first one for this week, and if those of you have a Advent wreath at home and you practice uh, observing this, then you would like that first one for the first week. So as you do your, uh, your eyewitness devotional, you might like that one candle during the first week, and then when we get to second Advent, you'd like two candles and so forth. And we do the same thing here, and it's meant to be done as a family, whether that's a church family or a family at home, to observe this season of Advent, of waiting, of expectation. Um, the colors of the candles, are also somewhat important. They are usually purple, and the season of Advent has traditionally been more purple, and the purple is the color for repentance. It's that season of repentance when we get to Lent, everything turns purple. That is meant to, um, to call us to remember that there is a second coming of Jesus, and that we're supposed to be getting ourselves ready and, and looking at ourselves and seeing if there's something that we need to apologize and repent for and then change our ways so that they're more in line with what uh, God would have us do so that we're ready when he shows up and we don't have to say, oh, I didn't know you were coming today. Sorry, um, not quite ready. And we'll get more about that in our lessons too. But, um, more in, in recent times, the color has morphed into more of the blues, and the blue is usually described as Marian blue for Mary. We, we anticipate and think that she wore blue, and so it's because of her expectancy and remembering her, uh, her time of, of, of pregnancy before Jesus was born that she wore blue, and so we have blue now. And it's more of this time of quiet waiting and expectancy and anticipation. So the, the flavor of Advent has changed just a little bit from being one of repentance to one of a, a, a joyful expectancy. All right. So um, we have these candles, and each of the candles actually represents um, a, a kind of a mini sub-theme. The first one for today is hope, and then next week it will be peace, and then we get to the pink candle, and it's pink for being joyous. And so we rejoice when we light the pink candle on the third Sunday. And then the fourth candle, um, I believe, is love. And then the candle in the middle, the white candle, is the Christ candle celebrating when he was born on Christmas Day and for the Christmas season. So we're going to talk a little bit today about that first candle that we just lit, the candle of hope. First Advent, also known as the prophecy candle. And it assures us that we can have hope that God will fulfill the promises and prophecies that were made for us in bringing us a Savior. Um, so we look at during this season and during this first week in particular, we look at other weeks as well, but we kick it off with looking at some of the prophecies about who the Messiah would be and how the Messiah would be. Many of the Old Testament prophets gave messages about what the prophet, what the Messiah would be, where he'd come from, the type of person he would be. And he had names like the Chosen One, the Anointed One, the Savior, God's Promised Leader, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that we talked about last week. And that this leader would reconcile the people with God and redeem them from their wrongs and show them the right ways to live according to God's will. Now that term, Messiah, that we talk about, that's the Hebrew word for anointed. The Greek word for anointed is Christ. So when we say Jesus Christ, we're not using him that as a last name. It's not like Jones or Smith or whatever, right? 
Um, Jesus Messiah is what we're saying, or Jesus the anointed one, the chosen one of God. So that's what that means when we say Jesus Christ. We're actually saying Jesus Messiah. And our lesson today in Jeremiah is one of those prophetic messages that we get for the hope of the Israelites. And Jeremiah says, In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David. That righteous branch is referring to his family tree, that there would be a branch on that family tree that would be the Messiah's family, the, where the Messiah would come from. So Messiah, we know, would come from David's family. And he shall execute justice and righteousness. As we say in our creeds and as we said in our opening collect this morning, he will return to judge the living and the dead. So one of the roles that the Messiah has is that he will come to judge people according to their deeds and how they did in life. And so that's part of where we need to be constantly looking at where is it that we can improve? Where is it that we can do a little bit better at doing what God would want us to do? The next part says that in those days Judah will be saved. And we recognize Jesus as the Savior. And then lastly it says that... Um, it will be called, Jerusalem will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. This is a nickname or an epithet for both Jerusalem and for the Messiah. That the Messiah would also be known as, the Lord is our righteousness. And you'll remember the word righteousness means right ways. So the Lord is our right ways. And Jesus, uh, in the Gospel of John, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So that's another way that we see how Jesus fulfills this prophecy, that he would be the one to show us the right ways. Now this is just one of a short passage of several um, different prophetic messages that give us an idea about the Messiah. And it gave people back in Jeremiah's time, which was in the late 500s BCE, a hope that there would be a Messiah that would come one day and put things to right. Well, finally, after almost 600 years, Jesus was born, and the people were waiting and hoping for that Messiah all that time. And so Jesus comes into this world, and he lives for about 33 years, and then he ascends up into heaven, and he has given us this promise that he will come again. And we thought, okay, great. The, the believers and the apostles thought that meant right away. They thought imminently. They thought he was coming just any second now. You know, that it's just, just a little time that he's going to be up in heaven. Then he's coming right back, and he's going to get us all together. And we're all going to go up to heaven right together. And so they kept telling people that, and we get some of that in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, where he's telling them to, you know, to not be living a wild and crazy life, drunk and, and wasted and so forth, that you should be prepared and be ready because Jesus is coming back any time now. You need to be on the lookout. And part of that is also in the gospel lesson. But um, the days turned into weeks and the, and the weeks turned into months and the months turned into years and the years turned into decades and the decades turned into centuries and here we are two millennia later and we're still waiting for that second coming. Well, Jesus in the gospel that we had this morning gives us a few clues he says, when you see the signs that I'm telling you about, you know that the time is near. And we haven't yet seen those kinds of signs. And I'm no expert. I don't have any inside knowledge. But based on what is recorded, if it's recorded accurately in Luke, it sounds to me like this is going to be a cosmic or celestial event. In the lesson this morning, he says, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And on earth, distress among nations caused by the roaring of the sea and the waves, that people will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. So to me, this sounds like something that everybody around the world will see all at once. It's not going to be hidden. It's not going to be a secret where only a few people know Jesus is coming. Don't tell anyone. No, this is something that is going to be observed around the world. 
that you will see it somehow in the heavens, that something is going to do something to the world, to the skies, to the heavens, to the stars, the moon, so forth, something like that that's cataclysmic, that's going to cause people to be fainting from fear and foreboding, is going to be seen by all. Well, that hasn't happened yet. So I think we're probably safe today. I can't speak for tomorrow, but for today, it doesn't look like that's going to happen right now. But we have this hope still that one day Jesus will return. And when he does, he will take us to himself, to that place where he is prepared for us. Now, for many of us, that might come more at the end of our natural lives, one way or the other. And maybe, who knows, some of us might be around for the second coming. But in either way, we should be hopeful for what comes after is going to be that place of peace and where you can lay down your burdens and there's no crying and no tears, that all will be in this paradise, as he told the, the thief hanging on the cross next to him. Today you will be with me in paradise. So until then, light our Advent candles. Today the candle of hope. For hope does not disappoint us. Amen. 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 We believe in one God, the Father, and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, Begotten, not made, not made, of one being with, with the Father. Father. Through him, him all things remain. For, for, for us and for our salvation, he came he down from heaven. heaven. By, By the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again from the according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Michael and Jennifer, our bishops, Allison, our priests, and all your church members in the service of Christ. That, that those who confess your, your name may be united in your truth, live, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Bless and guide the president of our, our elected officials and those in positions of leadership in our governing bodies. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and peace. That, that we may honor one, one another and seek one to the Lord. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors. That, that we, we may serve Christ like one another, another and love as he loves us. us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially remembering And bring them the joy, I'm sorry, give them courage and hope in their troubles. And bring them the joy of their salvation. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, especially. According to your promises. Grant us to them a share in your eternal kingdom. In the Anglican cycle of prayer. We pray for the, the 
Anglican Episcopal Church of Brazil. The Lord, the Lord bless, bless and, and keep them. them. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Trinity Church of Kenya. The Lord bless, bless and, and keep them. them. We acknowledge and pay respect to the First Peoples of the land, especially the Apache and Pascagati, who call this area of Arizona their home. The Lord, the Lord bless, bless and keep them. them. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most, Most merciful God, God, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, done, and, done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are, we are truly, truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may invite to your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. Please stand as you are able. We'll continue on page 7 in your bulletins. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because of your goodness and the fullness of your love revealed in your abundant creation, in the sending of your Son, and in the imparting of your Holy Spirit, our hearts are moved to thankful praise. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this note to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as Jesus taught us, we pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm.
this part of our worship, we like to recognize those that might be having birthdays or anniversaries. Do we have any birthdays this week coming up? Any anniversaries this week coming up? Would anyone like to request special healing prayers for people that you know? Any? Oh, yes, back here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> First name, please. Donna. Donna. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, for Donna, who's having trouble post surgery. Oh my goodness. Okay. Others for healing prayers. Let us raise our right hands and say the healing prayer for Donna. Then. Oh God, the grace, uh, the strength of the weak and the comfort of the suffering, mercifully accept our prayers and grant to your servants the help of your power that sickness may be turned into health and sorrow into joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do we have any travelers being a holiday weekend? I would imagine there's got to be somebody. The Santa Fe, New Mexico on Friday. The Santa Fe, New Mexico on Saturday. For you, okay, for you to Santa Fe, New Mexico. And um, we know this morning that Sandra Calhoun is coming back from El Paso uh, and is in transit, so we will continue to pray for her. Other travelers? Let us say the traveler's prayer together. O oh God, our heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> and um, last, but not on the card, gratitudes, answers to prayer, blessings that have come your way. Linnea. Um, I made it to and from Colorado in safety. Yay! Good travels. Blessings for that. Others. Gratitudes, blessings. I'm grateful that we had our family together for Thanksgiving. And uh, so far, <coughs> Mount Wood, everybody's healthy. So, Others? All right. Let's turn then to our post-communion prayer. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are the living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him and to you and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, make us holy as you are holy. Revealing God, allow us to see as you see. Sending God, motivate us to move as you move. Loving God, inspire us to love as you love. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. People of St. Stephen's, what does God call us to do? We are, we are called to love and serve. serve. Let us go forth in the, in the spirit of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And our closing song this morning is in the Gather Hymnal, number 337, People of Peace. <laughs>